Hello, everybody. I'm gonna turn down my AC. I am sitting in my car just for a minute. I finished up at my first barn today. I have two or three more to go. I'm super excited traveling around, doing traveling horse witch things. Um, and one of the horses that I just did a consult on, more or less, I suggested to go and get tested for EPM. And there are a lot of questions around EPM and why I continue to encourage people to test for it and what it is. And so I thought I would hop on here and do a video and explain that to you guys. Um, so EPM, if you Google it, it's a very long name. I probably will pronounce it incorrectly if I try, but it is essentially a parasite that the horses ingest. And it's a lot like, like just, just like a worm. It's not really, maybe it is, I don't know. But anyway, it's a parasite that they ingest and it is, for some reason, people think that it's not prevalent in Washington state. And I had 14 client cases confirmed as positive last year alone. And that's just in like my small circle of clients that I have here in Washington state. I also own three horses personally that have it. Um, it is hugely common. And my best guess is that A, we don't do a lot of research around it up here. Um, Texas does a lot. There's other states that are really prevalent in it or like they're known that they're prevalent to it. Washington state is just not one of them for some reason. Um, but it is, it is in our hay. And essentially it's a parasite that is carried around by raccoons and by feral cats are the two main ones that we know of for sure that carry it. And especially in Washington, we have really wet winters. So what happens is the little critters carry it and they run around the hay fields and they defecate in the hay fields and pee in the hay fields and they get all around and stuff and the, they pass it on through their feces. And so that gets into the fields, the hay grows through it, the hay has it, then the horses get it, and then the horses ingest it. And so if you, the, the, the few vets that I work with that are like really big on understanding this would say that about 90% of horses in Washington state would test positive for EPM. Whether or not the parasite then crosses the blood brain barrier to start showing the symptoms of the neurologic effects that the parasite has on the horse, it's a completely different thing. Um, one of the things that I just learned last year, unfortunately, is that the wormer ivermectin can push it through so that it does cross the blood brain barrier, which is really sad and really shitty. Um, yeah, so it's. We don't have a lot of knowledge around the thing, but what we do know is that it's really common. The other big misconception is that it's a death sentence and it's like this horrible thing. And oh my God, people can't ever know that my horse had EPM and oh my God, they'll never be able to do anything again. And we either have to put them down or retire them for life. Um, also completely and utterly inaccurate. So 10 years ago, my old jumper did get diagnosed with EPM. Um, and he, by the time it was like two years, of just ongoing feeling like he was just not right. You know, he went from being able to do canter pirouettes to like, if he picked up a canter, he would almost somersault. So it was a really big deal. And so his was getting like more and more neurologic as time went on, but we didn't test for it because he didn't show the neurologic signs in the beginning. He just felt like wrong to me, um, but he wasn't lame. And you know, we had issues with his feet and we had issues with his coat and we thought he was metabolic, but he wasn't metabolic. And it's like, there's, there's just all these things and really what it was was he had EPM. But so, so 10 years ago when he got diagnosed with that, it was still a really big deal. And I remember being like devastated, Disney princess, snot crying, like the whole thing. And so I'm 34 and my favorite book series, one of my favorite book series, I had a lot, but one of them was the Thoroughbred book series. So if there's other horse girl nerds on here that read that, you'll know. And there was a horse there in the book series called Storm Chaser and he got diagnosed with EPM and he was this big, beautiful gray thoroughbred racehorse. And when they got the EPM diagnosis, they just put him down. And that's all I remembered and heard when kid got diagnosed with EPM. And I was like, had him since he was a baby. I've raised him. His name, his nickname was Kid because, you know, he was my kid when all my friends were getting married and having babies. And so it was awful for me. And my vet was like, hey, there's medication now. We can give it a shot. We can just see. And I'm like, okay. But like in my head, I was like, that's it this is this is it he has EPM and I have to say goodbye to him and so I paid the astronomical amount of money for the marquee is what we gave him and gave it to him like a wormer 
and his symptoms started going away. Now his ability to reconnect his body was never quite the same again. And again, his was so bad that when he would pick up the canner, he would almost somersault. He would just collapse and fall. So his was bad on the neurologic scale by the time we caught it and treated it. Flash forward to now, after having all of like the rehab and the knowledge and the things that I do, the balance through movement method that I do is actually designed for him and designed for the EPM cases that we've had in. And what it's all about is reconnecting the body so that they lead correctly from the front end and that the hind end correctly tracks behind the front end and then the spine is all synced up because EPM essentially is, it's a parasite that starts eating away at the part of the brain that controls the central nervous system. And so most of the time, what you'll see is they kind of start to become like neurologic, not quite right from the hind end forward. And so other signs that we're seeing is they'll get like a weird atrophy on like the middle of their neck. They'll also get an atrophy um, where the saddle goes. And that and there's young horses that have never even been started under saddle and they have it. So it has nothing really to do with the saddle. And then their hind end goes from like being normal to all of a sudden they cave in. And they're like whoop. And so it's like they become cowhocked. And I say become cowhocked because they're not born. Some horses are born like actually confirmationally like that. But a lot of the cases that we see, they become cowhocked and they become eunuched and they become kind of sway backed. And it's like, it's so handy to have pictures of these horses when they're younger to see how their conformation changes because it's probably not, it's probably postural due to either imbalances in their muscling or in this case, the neurologic um, side effects of this parasite. So anyway, flash forward, we treated him. He's totally fine. He can do his finely changes again. He'll probably never do like the meter 30 jumpers, but he's also 19. So there's that. Um, but he can go over a fence. He can do flying changes. He can canter. He's happy. Um, another side effect of the EPM is that they get cranky and it's kind of similar to what you'll see in um, like in ulcers, they get kind of sensitive, especially in the flank area and the hind end area, and they just get flat cranky. And so like when kid, my lighting's on here weird, so hopefully it's not doing that to you. Um, <clears throat> when kid was like a, I mean, I could ride him in parades, you put little kids on him, you can walk underneath him. He's very, 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 very safe. And when he was in the height of his EPM stuff, he started getting aggressive. He would start biting, he'd start kicking. He hated his hind end, messed with, hated his hind ends, picked out. And the best thing that I can guess from that is that he went from being an athlete and he was strong and balanced and safe to all of a sudden he was disconnected from his hind end completely and he was doing his best, but he was just really, he just got angry. His body was not functioning the way that it used to. And I have lupus and before I got a hold on my lupus, like I can very much attest to what it's like to have to be an athlete and to then just have your body fail you. And so I think that's another thing that happens with these horses is they start getting more and more cantankerous just because they're like, I can't, like there's something very wrong and I can't fix it and I don't know what it is and it's confusing, it's really sad. So long story short, um, if you, you know, the EPM tests really aren't very expensive anymore either. So if you have a horse that's like, they're not growing a lot of soul in their feet. So if a horse is fighting something in their body, especially if they're not metabolic, but if they're fighting something in their body, usually they pull from the feet first. And so if you're not having a lot of good hoof growth, there might be something else going on. If their hind end is caving in and they're becoming a little bit more cowhocked, probably something to look at. Um, not being cross firing, not being able to hold a lead. Sometimes that's just an actual psoas issue. There's a dysfunction in their psoas that's causing it. If it's not that, then it's an, probably an EPM thing. I shouldn't say probably, but it might be an EPM thing. Um, again, the unect, the atrophy on the back. The other thing that happens is you'll have horses that, you know, when you have them in work, they do really good and they hold their muscle and their tone. And if you put them away and you don't work them for a little while, they just kind of start, their muscles just start fading away. Like they just look not okay and they just can't hold their tone like a normal horse can. A lot of time that is also EPM. So super treatable. You also don't have to do the hard like torture zero and marquee thing. You can also do one called rebalance. There's some other new ones that are coming out that's in tablet form. That's very easy um, and not nearly as expensive as it used to be. So all that said, it's super treatable. The rehab stuff that we're doing for it, they can come completely back. I've got, you know, 
barrel horses that are doing it. There's top jumpers that are doing it. Like they've all come back, dressage horses. It doesn't actually have to be retirement. It certainly doesn't have to be a death sentence. It's really honestly, genuinely not as big of a deal as people make it out to be. Um, and we can treat it and we can fix it. And so if there is any thought, and the sooner you catch it, you guys, like the way better the horse has a chance to, of recovering fully from it. So you catch it super early, you start looking for those early signs and you catch it and you treat it, like you're good, golden. Um, so again, 14 cases in Washington state confirmed just last year in my small circle. I own and have personally rehabbed three of my own. Um, it's, it's not, it's really not that big deal guys. I promise, I promise. Um, I tried to, there was something going on in my comments in my first video. I don't know if it's because my channel is new, but if you guys can't post comments below, come and find me on Facebook under Celeste Leilani and you can message me or Traveling Horse Witch on Instagram and you can message me there. If you have any thoughts or questions or things that come up around EPM and you just kind of want to brainstorm a little bit further, please reach out to me. Um, yeah, I'm happy to tell you any and all information that I have on it, but it is something that I'm very passionate about. Um, and I really, you know, quite frankly, kind of specialize in it. So as much as I can get the word out to get people to just do the damn test, treat them, get them on the rehab thing as quick as we can, and you can save your horses and the longevity of them. And that's what this is all about. So I hope that this helps you guys and that I will talk to you later. Bye.